Guaranteed. Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Shusaku Study Project. I don't know why I call them episode, I think it's just because it's a bunch of videos on YouTube. Welcome to another game that we've reviewed and analyzed, and uh, that I'm going to show you. This game is a game between uh, Shusaku, who's now Tudan, he's, like 12, he's 12 years old, and, uh, and Honinbo Josaku, who's a 7 dan professional, a member of the Honinbo house, and a uh, pretty strong player. Right, like we're seven non-professional. We're we're saying, you know, seven same rank as as Honingbo Shua. He's got the title Honingbo, so he's he's a strong player. And so it's going to be a bit different from some of the other games we've we've looked at. We're playing against people who are two don or five don professional. And they're they're strong, but they're kind of missing this kind of last bit of refinement that gets them to like the top level. So this is going to be a two stone handicap game, uh, as you can probably see on the top right, and. Before we start, as usual, I should I need to thank the people who contributed to the analysis. Uh, for this game, we have um, Fidey Oats, Itarios, De, uh, Cheese K, Bugcat, and uh, Fire Scourge, and myself. Uh, so a couple of names that we haven't heard yet. If you've been following the things chronologically, I'm hoping we'll hear them more, uh, because, as usual, we need more good people. Okay. So, let's get right into the game. We get an approach. And the standard pull back. And then we pull back here. <laughs> this was, you've probably heard me say this before if you've been watching the videos, the preferred opening pattern for Dosaku when he was white in two-stone handicap games. Uh, he's just kind of making this area sort of big. It is also, you might notice, um, the setup for uh, for Chinese openings, for mini or micro Chinese openings, which was very popular in the 1980s. Oh, man. So he can just kind of develop off of here, right? Now, Black is in no rush to start any kind of fight or complications, but he's going to play a 3-4. And so take the final corner that way, and of course what that means directly is this area becomes the, the biggest side. If you just count the number of lines between those stones, that's where they are, right? Uh, never mind the fact that if black gets one more move here, he really gets to build kind of a big framework with stones that are fairly interrelated. So white approaches, can't let that happen, right? So... What's white, what white is doing right now is fairly standard. Uh, just kind of moving kind of quickly, creating a bunch of smaller areas that can be traded or developed as necessary, creating the potential for complications. So here you kind of have the choices for directions. You could basically approach here or, or pincer here. Those are basically the two choices you have in this position on the board. Um, I think they're both relatively, uh, relatively equal, but black can... Black is going to prefer to kick, at least Juzaku did prefer to, to pincer here. I don't know why I just said kick. And one of the reasons why is because he's going to keep on developing from this from this stone. So it's still easier, basically, to go from here and then to approach, because then maybe the stones are going to be working well together. So white continues to move fairly quickly and approaches another corner. So as you can tell, white is moving very quickly, not really getting anything settled at this point, and is just going to keep on creating smaller areas, at least for, for now. And then he's going to be able to connect them together, or try to, th through complications and exchanges. So... Now, when you look at the, um, at the board position, you have basically one, two, three white stones that are in that are in close contact or like kind of like are near black stones, and the weakest out of all of them is this one at this point. So that's the one you probably want to help, and that is the one that white does help. White uh, leans on this to get out, and as far as that's going, you know, white is creating a position to go towards the the west side of the board. So black is developing strength. He's content to 
work here because he can probably develop the bottom side, like the south side of the board, and develop the east side, which will put pressure on this stone. So this doesn't, he doesn't mind that so much, right? This works okay. White group, white goes up. And black just plays steady. One of the reasons here is uh, you don't need to play fast because you've got two stones. So he just plays very solid and just goes from there. And white here makes a, a table shape. So he's not moving super fast. He's being pretty steady with his stones. He's making sure that there's no big attack that can be uh, applied right away. Even though he's sort of floating, right? But there is a follow-up. There's a clear follow-up on over here and, and over here. So uh, it's not a... It's not a passive move, it's a move that, while technically Gote has a follow-up that makes Black kind of maybe want to play in that area still. And so Black, Black does, Black extends here. And he leaves the corner, so to speak, open, like White can approach and attach here. But he is developing this area. So at this point, if you look at the, the board position, this group is doesn't have a base, but it has good contact towards the outside. So it's it's a little bit weak, but not very weak. This group is probably the weakest, the these three stones. But they have they can make it a base, they can go into the center. So the position is not terrible. Right? Um, now at this point, uh, what can white do from here? White has some forcing moves against this area, and that's pretty much it. And this is the weak group for white. So white probably doesn't want to, doesn't want to move away from this group just yet. Whether it is uh, shoulder hit here, shoulder hit here, or attach here, we're probably going to see something like like that. And part of the part of the idea, part of what we probably want to see is can we maintain Sente through the forcing moves here to get this group stronger? So that we can go back from this side and pressure these three stones in some fashion. So white leans, strengthen the, the group. Black says, okay, I'm content with making points here. White continues to extend, asking for possibly a base. Black is content to take profit. White makes shape. And black just connects very solidly. Black doesn't have to give any forcing moves to, to white, nothing to make life a little bit easier. So he's just gonna say, all right, I've got a strong group here that's gonna have a connection over here. It's harder for you to do something meaningful in this area. So now white has to take the initiative and do something else. And these two groups are pretty settled now. They're, they're pretty fine. Right? And so, um, white gets white does get a move to come back and pressure this. Now, so this group is we talked about these two groups being fairly settled, fairly uh, fairly stable at least. Uh, this group is stable as well. It's not settled settled yet in the sense that it doesn't have two eyes. You can still pressure it, but it is stable in the sense that if you pressure it, it's got something to do. But this group is definitely heavy now, right? Now this removes the easy access for these stones to make a base. And uh, so black is going to have to respond to it. Now this kind of uh, pressure on a group like this is often marked as the, a shift from the opening to the middle game. Because the opening is about kind of laying out the, laying out the bases, the the framework, so to speak, for how you're going to play the game, whether it is uh, a massive moyo, whether it is a massive fight, whether it's a bunch of 3-4s or 5-3s, or you want to play the Taisha in, on, in all four corners and see what happens, right? Um, technically, the Taisha is, I think, a Joseki just because it's been played so much, but it, it does involve group life and death. So here we can probably count a bit, and it's also possible for a game to shift between opening and middle game and back to opening if you resolve a group position and then you go back to developing the board. So if we count and take a quick look at what's going on, black has 
let's say five to ten points in here white's gonna have four points here maybe two points here uh, and then these areas are hard to kind of recount because you know we know that white can step in here but um, we know that white can step in here but it's still going to be five ten points ish so you know white black is black is up which makes makes sense because it's a two stone handicap game where 20 moves in right um, but it's worth noting see, this is not a guaranteed question because white can step into the corner here or even just do a knight's move but technically these two stones are behind the sector line and so that has some impact into how you think about the position and the strength so we were talking about how black is uh black is in pressure black is going to just get out here and grow this area a little bit He's going to put as much pressure as he can here because you don't really want you don't really want this honey as white you really want to have the ability to get out um and like you don't want this group to be sealed in because if this group gets sealed in the impact suddenly of the control of the center changes dr drastically so this is a bit of a it's a slightly dangerous move but white has black now has more liberties than white in this particular direct exchange so there's it's not a it's a strong move let's put it this way so it's, it's slow but it's very strong uh, it also means that you can again white can choose what to do and white doesn't actually reply to this move just yet white says maybe i'm okay with this maybe this is fine he takes a he takes a bit of a risk. So white just goes for the corner, and there's a couple of things here. One, of course, is it creates an open direction over here, and it's going to also kind of impact some fights in this area of the board, and it gives white about twelve points, right? Now. Black is going to go back and play this move. Now, this group here, uh, what this move does is it removes the ability for this group to leave to live locally if it gets completely sealed in. So now, um, now white has to respond because now it becomes a big problem if black can chase this group around. So black, so white just gets out. White just takes a step and moves towards the center. And this uh, really kind of helps um it helps this group a little bit with uh with as little impact as possible on this group right it doesn't really help uh, it doesn't doesn't really force black to put pressure on this group as a stronger move might do so it's a very careful move that white is playing here and so black is going to continue to get to get out and he gets out quickly so to speak it's you know it's okay that the cut here is still fine uh it white can't cut through this so this group is now getting much weaker but so is this group so it's a matter of how you're going to balance out the two and this group here has the potential for more impact because imagine imagine black gets to play a move like this it becomes so much harder for white to effectively reduce this area so white is going to think further ahead to the impact of the group to the rest of the board and is going to play uh, a move like this and as you can tell here the difference is suddenly this is going to be hard for this to be a lot of points right and this move is not strictly connected it's a large knight's move and a i don't know if there's even a name for this shape but um, it's hard to cut it off effectively. So now it's a little bit harder to harass this group. You can fight, but it's not really worth it. Uh, and what that means is now this has weakened this group a little bit. And this group is about to get weaker, right? But because this group has been weakened, this group is now comparatively a little stronger. So... And the first thing black is going to do is get uh, a couple of 
forcing moves to properly weaken the group. First, you get a forcing move here, right? He's closing out the path for this group to settle this way. So this really impacts the stability of this group. And it seems to be a pattern that we've seen in the in the earlier Shusaku games. Again, we've seen I don't know, 10 so far in, in the project. Um, but squeezing a group out to get profit instead of trying to kill it or seal it completely to and let it live uh, is something that Shusaku seems to like to do. He seems to like chasing a group around for profit. So white can't really resist or he can't really kind of tanuki from here and go do something else. This is really what he has to do. Now black uh, is going to continue the pressure here and it's a question of do you continue the pressure from this group or from this group right like you want to start from you want to start from weakness and then push towards thickness right and so that would mean that you want to start from this group probably but actually uh, again this can't really be cut so this is actually strong enough and no additional stones were played yet so it's fine and if white gets a, sto a move over here White has forcing moves to build a lot of strength. So this group is actually uh, the weaker one on the board right now. So black plays uh, th this shape here and moves from the top. So now if we take a look at the points again, and we take a quick look, we've got points for white here. We've got mm, points for black here, points for white here maybe points for white and points for black right so the points for black total here here are about 25 and from here and here and here is about 20. um and this because it counts one of the handicap stones but not the other you probably want to add about 10 points for this one right so it does mean that from the pure count perspective, black seems to have maintained its advantage. Now, um, on this board position, again, it's white's turn to play. And if you look at the, if you look at this, this is still the weak area, right? Like white is gonna need to help this group because it's going to be pretty terrible if black gets to like seal it in in any way, shape, or form. It's just very, very unpleasant. So we know that this is gonna be where white plays next. But if you look at areas that where white would like to play on the board, developing this area, developing this area, and stepping right in here are pretty good options for, for white. So white jumps and gets out. Um, and so one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think this doesn't actually um this doesn't make the cut possible just yet but if white gets one more move like this particular cut is not available yet as far as i can tell but if white gets one more move here it might mean that the connection is in danger so white might get a, a very strong sente move here so black is not worried about this yet and we'll come back to it later and instead is going to aim at the shape so he continues to grow. He's going to ask how much he can cut here. It's two two space jumps. This is a, I don't know, Giga table or something. Um, and it's, it's hard to know what you want to work with. If you look at the board position, and if you look at the stones, these two stones are currently the light stones. You can treat them lightly because if black takes them, it's literally just points and it's no strength, nothing that impacts the rest of the board. But these two stones matter a lot more. Because they really, if you lose these two stones, then like all of this becomes points. And then you just, you know, say goodbye to the opponent, thank you for the game, and you just go home and cry. Um, so. So white gets out gently softly it's hard for black to cut this off completely but he is maintaining his advantage here and trying to run into the center and so we have we have the beginning of a running fight here and he's trying to get as you might notice ahead of the sector line 
right? So black continues to jump. And then all these groups are now running towards the right, towards the left, towards the, the west side. It's okay. I'm left, right. It's all a matter of perspective, you know? It's all, it's all in your head, man. So, oh, this stayed in this game. I forgot that. Um, we have a, a comment here. So here, white is going to burn some Aji. And it's going to, you know, black will fix the connection. But it's really going to help the strength of this group. And so now's a good time to, to play this move. It's it's okay as as long as you can still do something here maybe with this cut. So there's some potential in multiple directions here. So it, it makes the group guaranteed alive. alive. So black connects. Um, and so now let's take a look at where we are. It's hard for white to attack this group directly, right? But this is the group that white would like to attack because that is absolutely just the, the weak group, right? So how do you how do you attack from here? Well, uh, if you can't make a clear a clean attack, you change the board position so that you get something from which you can attack. And you have to do that by figuring out what's available. So as we said, we can treat these lightly. So if we get black to create to play moves here, we're happy, right? If we get if we get to strengthen this, which weakens that, we're happy. So let's see what uh, what Joe Saku does. He changes direction and attaches here, which honestly I think is a pretty amazing move. I probably wouldn't have come up with it. I would probably have been caught up in in this fight. Uh, but this is is an extension, as we were saying, of this fight. It's going to change this area. If It means that if these stones can connect out in this direction, then uh, this group is much, much weaker. So what? Uh, so black has to take into that, that into account. But black also has to take into account that this could be a lot of points if it doesn't if it doesn't get cancelled effectively. So black plays underneath, which seemingly allows both of the things we just said about not allowing, right? But it also kind of undercuts this area, so it's gonna be harder for that to be points. And this stone now has to do something with itself. It's gonna be hard for this to be cut because it's gonna Atari that can't be done, you can't do anything about it. And so you have to kind of go in, in this direction. So this, this undercutting does go in the direction we care about because it forces white in a direction that we want to, it forces white in a particular direction in a manner that we like. So white is fighting back, treating his stones lightly, working to develop some shape and when black atar is here, white extends. Black in turns extend to protect the corner. And then white is going to Atari here and catch that stone in the ladder. So this group now is, is stable because you, black can play ladder breaker, but this stone, this group has, has good shape. So now, um, we have to consider the connection between these, the stable group and this particular group here. So this might become territory at some point, but this fight got shifted a little bit. And these, these stones are, they're still connected. It's not a big danger, but it is a thing that is going to have to start changing. So, Black is going to ask a question here about what we can do in this area. White is going to stay more connected. And again, the idea here is these stones can be treated lightly. These stones we can't really. And then we're going to wedge. And this is a simple question. We ask white, what would you like to keep 
on this on this board. And White says he wants to keep the pressure on uh, on the on this group. So black connects here. And after after this connection, White maintains shape specifically in this area. The cut here is still possible, but if you if white if black cuts here, white can then connect underneath and then have have shape. So at this point, black is content to take this forcing move first to read to make it harder for white to to do something on this side. Now at this point, um, white can um, at the whole point here is you can still live locally. You're building eye shape while you're reaching out for this. So this is a, a, sh uh, a difference, a, a shift in perspective where if this group can live and these stones can live, best of both worlds, right? And if we have to take into account uh, a position like this, then why not? So now white, not black cuts and white asks about the cuts again. Because if black connects, white can push, and then this is cut. And the only kind of way to avoid the cut is for black to play here, which is just it's just so much not sente, it's just not fun to play that particular move, right? So black is going to ask some questions about the position. And uh, hello, Fire Scourge. And then white is going to uh, play here. Now this is the beginning of uh, of a very complicated situation. And there's a lot of things happening on this board. So I'm going to make a smart light adjustment here. Get some more. So this is a complicated fight and there's a lot of variations in the SGF and I'm, and I'm not going to show most of them because if I show all of the variations, this will be a very, very long video. Um, but I will talk about some of the things that Katego has evaluated uh, because the way we play this, the way we do the analysis is we have a pass with Katego first and we mark everything that's a three point mistake or above uh, so that we, you know, we who aren't top professionals have a chance to evaluate this game somewhat effectively. And it turns out this move here is almost a four point mistake uh, because what white should do is white should play here and just take and just cut. White should take this trade. This is a four point better trade for, for white. And again, there's a variation in, in the SGF if you want to look at most at most of this. So white plays here. And black connects. And you can probably guess that this is now a mistake. And black should go should play here. Uh, you might or might not be able to guess this, but when white made this mistake, white changed the size of the, of the, of the position. And so uh, now this connection doesn't matter as much. So now that they've both made the same mistake, white comes back and says, okay, now I can connect here and here. So white got that position. Black says, this is what I want to get on the other side. And so this is, this is the trade that both agreed on, agreed to, right? Connect, 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 and then black gets this move. So white says, all right, well, look, I want to stay, I want to stay connected. I want to keep some kind of impact over here. And really, I would rather not make this group alive right away if I can avoid it. So black now plays a move that is a solidification move, but it is, of course, not a gote move because if white doesn't play here, then the three stones are dead. And this corner is absolutely gigantic. So not really an option, right? 
Now here, um, if you want to consider the board position right now, uh, for this group, this group can play over here, or it can play over here to make a second eye. So this white group is now locally alive. I'll just, you know, I'm just pointing this out in case this position, which as you can tell is a very common position, comes up in your games. Just very common position. See this all the time. Basically a Joseki. Alright, so um, doing this also maintains some pressure on, on this group. Because you, if you're counting the, the liberties and the options, this group is in some amount of in some amount of trouble. It's not, you know, it's not dead, but it's up some trouble. So one of the ways to, to balance this out is to strengthen, is to weaken this group. And one of the ways to weaken it is to keep it disconnected from a live group. So that, that makes some sense, I think. And then white is going to play here to secure his second eye right away in, in a more sente fashion where he's going to reduce the corner. Now we're more or less settled again. We have a, a group here that's weak. We have a group here that's eh, it's just stronger. So white does have to take this into account, but it's a two-stone handicap game. So, you know, this is, this is fair. It is worth considering. Again, we're 63 moves in, so there's not too much. But white is managing his groups extremely carefully, and... I don't know if we've ever noticed that white had a weak group, had more, had more than one weak group at a time on the board. Like white was very careful about that. So if we if we count, um, what do we have? We have about twelve points here, about ten points, yeah, two points here, and then like three points here. This is like fifteen, ish. Um, it's not it's not a ton. Over here, we've got four points for black, because this is going to be hard to count as 40 points. It could be five. Let's make it five. Uh, this is going to be 10 points. That's 15. And then we got this. So, uh, top, territory-wise, it's fairly even, but strength-wise is where the question really remains. And... Uh, but it is worth noting that at this point in the game, uh, black is about 10 points up. So this means that black has already lost one of his handicap stones here. And that's significant because that is not how the games against the two dons and the five dons go. Right? Like the games against the two dons and five dons, he keeps his handicap and he gets more of it. But against Shua and, and Josaku, you can see that they're playing the game a lot more carefully, and they're putting him in a putting a, putting a lot more pressure on him. So, um, this being said, it's still interesting to watch his games against the two downs and five downs because you can learn a lot about how to manage groups, how to uh, use your handicap stones, how to handle strength on the board. And how to take into account exchanges and what counts. Like it's, they're still very interesting games to look at. They're just a lot less, they're less tense than this one. Let's put it this way. So besides this, this is stable. This is okay, but it's not alive yet. And this is not alive yet. So we have a bit of a running group, running fight between these two. So black is going to help his currently weaker group a little bit by also trying to keep this group separated from this strong group. Um, and so it's not surprising to see that from this move, white just connects because it would be a complete disaster if suddenly these two, this became one very strong group, right? So now let's again talk about, about the groups a tiny bit. But in the current swing of the pendulum and the pendulum swing here is when you talk about these fights, the um, one move in one group makes one group stronger, another group weaker, and it impacts other groups subsequently that way, right? So here, this group here is pretty strong, and that means that this group is weaker comparatively. But this group is a little stronger than this one, and 
this group is so weak right now that this group is fair is strong enough but uh but this as much as as it's a strong group is not alive yet so so all right here we have uh, black's next move and black is going to come from this direction to try and squeeze this group and profit in the center from it uh, black should actually come away from a slightly different direction and should play here he should aim to split the strong group further and continue continue the race and i have again there's a variation on uh in, in the sgf for for this And so white responds very dutifully and kindly here. And this is uh, another small mistake because white should poke here first. The, um, but this is actually a, an interesting move that white, that black doesn't respond to because then black goes back and plays here. Uh, the, the variations are pretty subtle, which is another reason why I'm not going over them in, in this game, uh, in this review. This was uh, this was a difficult game to really take into account and review because uh, this particular mistake here this was um, this was a three point mistake and at this point in the game black is up seven points so it's not it's not the end of the world like as much as Josaku is making some mistakes in this fight so is so is black so is shusaku uh, and in fact speaking of of mistakes uh black black should go down this route here for a bit of an exchange to continue pressuring this area but um black has a different idea in mind and plays here and this is a five point mistake i don't know if i can keep on mentioning all these things all the time but um this is it's not great because it, he's doing it to solidify his points but all he's doing here is making black is making white stronger so you end up in a position where this is end up kind of forced now that this is here this is the sequence right and white gets to force here and here exchanging um where on earth is l8 playing here first would be big for the thickness in the middle right like playing here it would be very big but you'd be burning a lot of aji this way as well so so it's not great like because black also wants to be able to get out with um with this group afterwards so it, black wouldn't mind this exchange so much so white is going to poke in first and so black this is forcing black connects uh, now we have another uh, small mistake for for white uh, white should go here and continue to reduce which is the direction to nullify to kind of take advantage of this mistake right saying okay well you've played two moves here I'm stronger and you don't have more points here uh, and also this group here is gonna have to struggle for two eyes so this would be the more aggressive path to really challenge uh, blacks decisions but instead white plays here this ends up being uh, a three-point mistake so we're not talking very big and by the way this is a three-point mistake that means black is up two points or three points now so the game at this point was dead even and we are 73 moves in so that is quite a show of strength from from josaku and it does make you wonder given how much stronger that he is and again we'll never know these things right um but how many of josaku's mistakes are intentional directional mistakes to keep the game kind of even around that like you know zero to four points um and how many of them are just actual reading mistakes we'll just never know this but shusaku is 12 years old and a two down professional so this is a honin game it's possible this was a teaching game 
but it's still interesting to consider these things right regard like we're not we're not evaluating the the players in any way shape or form just the moves then uh, we can see that this should have been played over here instead of over here for that impact and black actually realizes this and comes back here so now we have um a mei again between here and here so we're still locally alive the group is still fine so white now comes back to this move which was again the move that katago was looking at earlier saying you should play this move now and black makes a tiger's mouth here or a double tiger's mouth to keep his stones as connected as possible right between this and this uh and then, uh, again, white should white should go here to force the sequence here and, and settle this area. Um, and then black would come out, should come out and push out this way, and then white comes out. Uh, but that's not where, where they both go. Instead, white plays here. And this is, again, this is a three and a half point mistake. And the score is now black plus three. So again, this is, you know, when white is slightly ahead, black seems to make a mistake. So this is why I have some questions. But it doesn't change the fact that essentially this move sort of gives gives black sente, right? And black recognizes that and, and takes sente and does something else with it. So... Black takes a big point. Now the left side is split. Black can make a base in both directions and can do a one space jump up if necessary. And that, so white and then white just caps it. Just says, you know what? That's fine. I let's continue fighting ish positions. And this is weirdly open because this stone is is getting much weaker very fast. Uh, this group is okay. These stones are, are fine. This group is out, but you know it's it's mostly connected, right? So white is white's in a good place overall. You know white has managed very carefully these groups still. So black. Does a one space jump and pressures and pincers this stone, which makes a ton of sense. And then white steps into the corner, which I feel like we could have seen that one coming. Here, however, black turns and white aims for life. and connects. Now this group has a base, and this group has room for development and has potential points. Black will probably want to move somewhere here because this stone has a follow-up to to shred this area, but we're talking two, four, six, eight, ten. We're talking a ten-point swing total, or like plus ten versus plus zero. So there's bigger things on the board to play for now. And now, black gets the other extension. So now this group is alive. Now it would be nice, it would be great for black to capture this stone. It would be absolutely fantastic. But we have to see whether that's going to happen or not. Right? So, the question is going to be, where does white play next? This stone is fairly light. It's got so many directions to go in. It's going to be okay. We just mentioned that these groups are, are stable and safe and fine. So it is now the time that white chooses to play this move. Now, um, this is actually a three-point mistake that puts black up five points. So black was up by two. Um, 
again white should go here this is the bigger area to to resolve first but the one of the reasons i would suggest probably why uh why white isn't playing this is because that sequence here is gote for for white and you can see that in the sgf actually i can, I can probably show you just that sequence because it's simple enough but it makes sense um and this is every time every time katago says can we play here please this is what katago wants to do block here go here go here and capture this this is what katago wants every single time just make this one eye and then it's a matter of where does black play next because now black has sente at this point on the board black would play here and katago would be okay with that and would atari here uh, and then jump out over here so kind of growing this area after making sure this group is completely alive and there's no left forcing moves on it um, so it's interesting to look at the way katago does this um, the sequences are they're not super hard. Some of them are not very hard to follow. Some of them, there's questions about what's going on. Uh, but um, again, it's there's so many variations because there's so many three points mistake like it's and they're really not that much bigger than three points. Uh, but it's it really would really expand. And we're 89 moves in. And there's a it's a 220 move game, so I should probably get going. Uh, should probably get moving. I want to finish this game before the cows come home. So um, white plays here and treads this area, and this is a big front game, right? Uh, then we're getting close to a time when this matters, as you can tell. We were talking about closing this off versus shredding this. And closing this territory or beginning to close it so what we're looking at here uh, from this perspective I I may have just called you a cow um, but I did it with the love if that makes a difference we have potential territory here potential territory here potential capture here but that's kind of you know that's that's now the focus of the game so this 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 stone this single stone is doing a lot of work because it's making life a little bit hard for black just like to make the right choices so black plays here which it turns out is a three-point mistake so because black should play here and i can show you i guess the the local the local exchange that uh katago suggests it's very very simple White says, okay, I should live here. And then black would turn. And that's a significant change of impact on the board here for, for black and white. So, but it's also worth noting that even with this exchange in mind being, you know, what Katago would want to do, this move is a three point mistake. So it's just three points worse than white, than what Katago wants to do. So it's not terrible, right? I would probably make worse choices than that in this board position. So far. So white extends. Black blocks. White honey. Atari. Connect. And turn. So we have some life here. This stone doesn't matter so much, so it's fine. And we are beginning to make this group stronger. And we're not going to try to capture anything necessarily, although capturing this would be pretty delicious, not going to lie. But if we can connect to anywhere, we're going to guarantee this is not points for black. That would be pretty nice. So black is going to do the next normal thing, which is, can you please not grow this area and make points with it? White is going to challenge the concept suggest that maybe he does get to make points in this area and so when white says can i please make points here black says okay well i'm gonna make a base for my group and uh now that i have a base this group is stronger and i'm gonna be able to attack this and by the way this group is now not connected to this area nearly as well so 
What are you gonna do now, Mr. Baby Child Shusaku? Huh? 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 Not so big now. Probably Joe Saku didn't do all this baby talk bullying. But we weren't there. We can't know. You know, maybe maybe he was bullying Shusaku and Shusaku was crying through this game. We'll never know. And so Black continues to disconnect. So this is this is safe because this can connect uh this can connect out as necessary. And so white is going to work on creating areas for MIAI connections here. See what he can do. Now groups, um, this group and this group aren't safe yet. This, these are the two weak groups that are fighting. And white is going to challenging the connection, is challenging the connection between this group and this group with this stone. While making some shape that he might use to connect back out to here. So, Black is going to want to stabilize Group 1 in some fashion in order to be able to keep the fight going. And he's going to do so by poking at the shape a little bit. He's making his own dog face. And this gives him some impact here for cuts, attachments, and so forth. So, White then cuts here and... I, I hate to, to tell you this, but this is another one of those things where this is a three-point mistake. Although now I'm beginning to think maybe it's actually not intentional uh, because white should play here. So I will leave it to you to go into the SGF to figure out what black would do after this sequence that is Gote for white, but three points better. Uh, but white takes this move, takes this move first. Although, of course, this is also a go-to sequence for white, so at this point I have questions. Then black takes this stone out. And white says, okay, um, I'll get out. And then white, and then black is going to drive the group this way. And this is... Uh, the result here is cutting the line of sight between this group and this group. So he's sacrificing these two stones to get strength on the board. This way. And so that's pretty good, right? So it's a pretty good way to use the Aji in group three. Uh, and it's a. You sort of gotta wonder was he just waiting for this? Did he, did he knew he was going to have to deal with this strength and kind of build the strength at the right time on the board? Or was this just kind of the way he set, he set this up? I, I don't know. We'll never know. So, Black works on the last loose group he has now. And connects group 1 and group 2 together. So now the, the large end game begins. Uh, there's, we're still going to be poking at... The connection between the groups but now we're really just reducing we're, we're beginning to create boundary plays and the way we create these boundary boundary plays at first in the center is cha challenging the connection between the groups we're gonna see more boundary plays here that will involve sh shattering and shredding this area for points now if we count points on the board now this is about 16 points for for white um this is about six points so that's 22 this is about seven points, so 29. And then two points here, 31, right? It's like about, about 31 points. Then this is this is 16 points, so about, so this is the same as this, right? So 16, this is about four, honestly, it's about, it's about four points, so 20. Uh, and then this is eight points-ish, so 28 points. So we have, like, it's very, very close, right? The Oh, and sorry, I forgot, there's, there's some points here. There's three points here, approximately, for black. So, like, 30-ish points. So, the count is pretty close here. Now, as far as the potential, here, white has kind of the, we'll say the best potential, but it's, um, it's not going to be a ton of points. 
because it, you can't close this off. It also goes to the next move that white plays. White is going to begin by challenging this area here, saying, can I cut any of this off? Can I make any points? Can I capture something? And so black is going to answer by saying, can I capture something? Can I take some of this? Right? So white creates a connection. He's also going to poke at this. Can I say, can I cut and take this stone? Because if I can, if I can, yum yum. Right? That's, that's going to be good. Black says, I would like to connect pretty please. White plays here. And this is apparently a like 2.8 point mistake. I will for a hundred thousand dollars in I don't know monopoly money that you can steal from your cousin next time he's in town. Uh, where should white play? Uh, yes, yes, white white should play here. But it's worth noting that this is now a smaller mistake, right? It was 3.8, now it's 2.8, 3.8, 3.1, 2.8. So it's we're now at the point where like eh, things are smaller, right? Like it's 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 roughly even to play here. Sorry, this is actually this move is played. And so black blocks. And then white is gonna continue to drive this reduction here. Now, um, I'm sorry, I was wrong. White plays here, and uh, this is also a mistake. Black is now up six points. This is a four-point mistake. Where do you think white should play? Yes, white should play here. Again, the, the SGF will let you appreciate all of the variations and all the ways black would get Sente and choose Sente out of this. Um... Black plays this move, which secures the connection in this area. This is a three-point mistake, because black should play here. I feel like there's a theme in this game, and it is play there and give Sente away. Uh, but apparently giving Sente away is very hard. All right, so... Now it is time to play this move. Just live. Yeah, apparently just live. But it's also a very... Uh, it's also a, a very difficult concept because you don't really want to give the opponent center. All right? Or at least I don't want to. I struggle a lot with that. It's very, very hard for me to do that. So this is a good lesson for me, I think. Whether I can apply it correctly or not is different. So now that we're doing this code here, Right, um, the co is is about eight points. Like basically, white gets four points if white wins, and black is gonna get four or maybe five points. And so that's the size of the co is the the total of one plus the total total of the other because that's the swing in points that you're gonna get in a final score. Um, like a captured stone on on line on line on the second line is always six points, and we eat one or we are eaten. So that's kind of the basic way of looking at this. So white asks if we can cut here. So we're going to connect. And of course, that means we get to take the coat. Black is going to ask what he can do in this area, and White is going to say, I would rather you not take all of these stones. And so Black takes the code. White says, can I cut off all of these stones? Black doesn't have a choice and says no. So White takes. Um, black plays here. This is actually a four-point mistake. Um, black connects to prevent the cuts. Because if white gets to cut off this group, then the game is going to be basically over, right? Uh, the 
funny thing is, at this point, there is a co-threat here that is big enough that uh, Black should take it, and Black doesn't. So, it is... It does seem like both players continually missed this board position. It was like, did not realize this was the case. Uh, and then there's a couple of other co-threats to play. Not a ton, but there's a couple of other co-threats. So it looks like when Black played this move, uh, like he's up, this is a four point mistake, he's up one and a half points here. So either he counted really, really well all the end game right now, or this is just a genuine mistake and I'm gonna go with genuine mistake. So White finishes the Ko. And then Black plays this kind of very yummy double sente Yose move. So White cuts that. Black goes up. White stays connected. Black descends. And then White expands out here. It's a, uh, you know, connection, maybe closing off a couple of points here, getting something over there if we can. Black plays here to take this stone. This is uh, not the best endgame. I'm going to let you guess where the best move would be. And if you don't guess over here, then you haven't been paying attention. So, uh... White says okay. Black takes. Uh, this is a five point mistake. I'm gonna let you guess where black should play. And if you don't guess over here, then I don't know what you're doing with your life. Um, it's just at this point, you know, at this point. So, white plays here. This is a uh, this is a four point seven point mistake, and the game is now dead even. And and white should play over here. <laughs> yes, Katago is very sad about this, and Fire's Courage was very sad that Katago was like that because he was looking at all these variations, going, "Why am I looking at this? This is killing me." So, anyway, at this point, uh, Black decides to start this co. And uh, White plays a co threat here. I'm going to go ahead and, and let you guess where White should have played. Yeah, that's correct. That's. That's, yeah, that, that's right. Um, you, you got it in one. And so Bla White is aiming for endgame reductions for the co here. Now this is a 2.7 a point mistake by Black. Black should play this forcing move here and move on. Um, White takes the co back, which is a mistake uh, because White should play in the top right corner. I'm going to keep on saying this until Katago stops saying it, just because I feel like it's important to note that. But it might get very annoying very fast. Or maybe it's already annoying, I, I don't know. Black turns. Um, Black should play at S15. This is a four-point mistake. White responds over here. This is a seven point mistake because white should play over here. And I'm kind of curious actually here. Yeah, so the best result here, um, the best result is get this eye in Gote. Let black push once here and then you extend over here. Instead of, and then black takes the Ko. Then you cut. Maybe I'll just maybe I'll work through this variation. But it's ah, uh, it's a co. K 
code variations are tricky because this is really just fighting a code. And this is probably going to be more effective for you to look at for the SGF. So you can just sit down and just kind of really poke around at it. Um, but yeah, this is a seven point mistake because you want to be able to change and impact the board position a little differently. And you're giving the opportunity for black to not to, to do that differently. As long as black realizes what black should do, which is again, poke over here and then come back over here. But in this case, we don't have this because black takes the code. I'm uh, <laughs> not very good, but something tells me there is significance in the top right. Got a gut instinct. What's up, J-Rod? It's good to see you here. So this turns out to be a, a six-point mistake, taking that co. Uh, but it does mean that white gets to play this kind of fun move over here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to... Then black gets to play this move. And this is just... The fact that this is what's happening on this board, that we get to see these four stones here, is absolutely amazing. And yes, in fact, black should play over here and not over here. But this is just better because it is... I mean, come on, look at this. It's... You never see this. It's amazing. I love it. So, white takes the coat. This is a six-point mistake because... I, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, finally, finally, Black takes a chance and says, maybe I will listen to this computer from the future. Black doesn't actually say that, but they finally think this is big, big enough. Now, White doesn't just live, which is, you know, fine, cool, okay, great. Uh, he plays a, a forcing move here, so black connects. My computer is telling me this is a good move. Oh, good. Oh, good. And then we are going to poke and ask if we can cut this. We can cut or snap back here, right? So this is all fine, all good. Black connects. And then, finally, 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 finally we get the second eye. This is probably the end of Katago being mad at us. Unless Katago finds a new reason to be mad, which is certainly possible. Speaking of which, it is time for Black to play, and Black decides to take the Ko, which is a mistake. It's a mistake. Um, what Black should do here is play this forcing move, which is just going to be bigger. Uh, White is forced to connect over here. And then that means black can poke at the shape of the big bend and then uh, connect over here. And it's just kind of working out the tiny big, the tiny points in this area. So this is what should happen. But they are human beings and this is a very complicated, very subtle board position. So that's not what we get. Um, and then white takes this co because the best thing to do when you're fighting a co is make a second one, right? That's how the game works. But to be fair, it's a little more than that. He's really threatening to kill this entire group. So I think it's a good co-threat. We'll just leave it at that. Now here, um, the interesting thing about the board position is we're now going back to the co-threats from this co in the corrections category is giving. So, this is uh, this is a mistake. It's a four-point mistake, and the reason why is because Katagosh wants to play this code threat. Like wants to play that first. So I'm not gonna go through these because now it's really just kind of subtle forcing moves to work through the code. Again, uh, I will say this until you decide to mute me. This is available in the SGF. Uh, Black decides to push here, which you might recall was one of the moves that was good a long time ago, back in the early days of being mad about this. Um, so this turns out now to be a four-point mistake, because here Black has moved on to say this is a bigger, uh, a bigger shape point to attack first. 
Um, but the game here is a black, black plus four. This was a four point mistake. So black was actually up eight points and black is and black burned a couple of those. So white blocks here. Black is just going to connect very gently. So white is going to connect. Black plays an empty triangle. And we can all laugh at that. Um, white should just connect super safely here. It should just should just do that. Uh, but instead, white plays this move. This is <laughs> the computer in the future is telling me I'm too late now. But white makes this shape instead. Black takes back the ko, which again turns out to be a mistake because black should play here first. And then finally white fixes that shape point. Black wedges. White says, I really don't care about that particular co-threat. Thank you very much. And then black plays here, which is, you know, not the move that we saw in that Kadago suggested, but a fair enough, uh, a fair enough threat, I suppose. And so white says, um, I'm gonna finish this co, and then you have to play a move here, right? And um, the this is a simple counting exercise in the sense that if black decides to take these stones, then white is happy to take these. It's a fair, it's a fair trade. Uh, and when I say fair, I mean it's a good trade for for white. So white gets a bunch of forcing moves here that don't give a lot more points to uh, to white, to to black. I mean, and then white comes back and blocks this. Just fair, right? And so this, because you can't encl enclose this area, it, playing stones here is not really worth uh, give you points. So saving this is actually bigger, right? We are at this point in the game when this is how you count like a couple of points here and there. Black gets this forcing move here. And then gets to pull back. White turns. Black gets to step in to reduce and ask if he can capture a gigantic string of stones. And then we get this reduction. White stays connected from underneath. We are going to finish off this area. As you can tell from the fact that I'm not talking all that much, these are not mistakes because they're both good at endgame. Um, I think we're actually thankfully out of mistakes in this game now. Hey, I'm a terrible person. Uh, and then we're going to close off this. White solidifies. Because there's just not enough co-threads here to make it worth those three stones. We finish the, the life here, then uh, black says, can I save my group? White says, I would like to snap back if that's possible. Is that an option I have? Black says, nope, it's not an option you have, and my group is alive now. Thank you. So because white, because black played this move, white gets to ask if he can take two stones. And he gets to ask a little further if he can disconnect. Uh, white captures here in response to the threat to capture. And then when black asks to capture, white makes a dumpling. Black asks if he can take a bunch of stones. White will say no. And then black will kind of split things, see what, if we can make any points. 
but all of this gets very reduced. So not a lot of points here for, for black. We get to close here. We are really struggling to finish this game. We are really getting all the points we can get. And here actually is the last move in the game record. Um, there's a couple more to really finish out the, the game. But uh, this game ends with Black winning by four points. So Shusaku wins this game by four points. Ha! Huh. So this was uh, a very interesting game, I think, other than, um, other than both players completely missing the overall value of, of playing here. I think there's uh, interesting exchanges in managing the groups. There was a lot for me to, to explore from how, uh, how White managed his weak groups and then handled the exchanges in these areas of the board. So I, this particular attachment over here I thought was really cool. I really enjoyed that. I, I hope you got something out of that too. All right, so let me let me put these stones away, uh, and then while I do that, I'll tell you about the usual things. So I have I have thanked the contributors for for this game. Um, I hope you on YouTube are going to enjoy this particular game review. Uh, I always really enjoy watching. I mean, Shusaku against very strong players, I think, is always fun to look at and. Uh, Shusaku as a child against strong players, when you can see really the difference in in wisdom and refinement, is still fantastic. So, uh, if you want to look at the SGF that I've mentioned a thousand times, it is going to be in the description of the video, uh, along with a link to the the homepage for the project. If you want to join and help. I am. Uh, I need. I need help. I need more people. We need more people uh, to help us analyze these games. I'm also looking for a couple of people who uh, writes who can write some code, because I have a project that I want to put that I'm beginning to work on on my on my own. I'm looking for coders and designers. Uh, the languages. So design. There's no preference for the language, which is I don't care about the tools because I'm not. Uh, I'm not a designer, uh, but I need people who understand uh, Elixir and people who understand JavaScript because I want to put together a tool to help these reviews be, uh, to help the process for these reviews be more manageable. Basically, you can think of maybe something like like, like GoKifu, but um, something where you can create a kind of canonical master review for a game and then have a process to integrate suggestions for reviews into this master review. I realize this is uh, possibly limited in usage to people who might be who might want to do things like this, but I also think that this just doesn't exist, and so maybe that's one of the reasons why people aren't aren't trying to do this. Uh, so, uh, and then I see how this will work out with the lights. Somewhat manageable. Uh, yeah, so Elixir, JavaScript, uh, design to help me design the uh, the app. I have a sense of what, what the behavior needs to be. I just need someone to help me make it look good and be somewhat pleasant to use. Because left to my own devices, it's going to be very, very ugly. Uh, and yeah, so we need more more people to review uh, to review these games together. And it's, I think Fire, Fire Scourge can, can attest uh, he might not, but he can. That this is this is fun to do, or at least not tremendously annoying. It just it takes a lot of time, and it will take less time when there's more of us because then we'll be able to do fewer of them because we'll know that they're happening. Anyway, let's close out this, this YouTube video. I will see you all at the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, cheers, everyone. And maybe, all right, and marker description and game. Oh man, and then stretch.